gamers, today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing this big box. Finally, I had it for a little while and you may have seen the book reviews that we've done on the channel. It is The Reckoners based on the novels by Brandon Sanderson. And for those of you that are wondering why the framing is a little different, we're trying something new. It matches the framing that we use for the book reviews. And I want to say a thanks to a Reddit user Table53 for suggesting that we try it. So please let us know in the comments below if you think it's good or if you want us to go back to what we were doing before. Now the game is published by Nauvoo Games and it is designed by Seth Van Orden and Brent Sobel. And I will stop blathering away here and let Julie tell you more about the game. So it's a cooperative game that's a one to six player ages 14 and above. Box says 75 minutes, but I think our experience has been a little bit less than that. I'd say under an hour, about 45 minutes. Yeah, between 30 to 45 minutes, definitely with two players. Specifically, if you are experienced with this kind of game, this and sort of, you know, uh, well, I'll explain the game. This is a good segue, actually. Basically, what you're doing, you've got your hero board. You've got different enemies you have to defeat. You're going to be rolling dice and assigning dice in order to defeat the villains, and you're also researching the weakness of the main villain, Steelheart, and you gotta do that before you can defeat him. Can you save New Cargo? Well, that's what you're trying to do in The Reckoners. Now the game does feel a little bit like a couple of other games that we've played in recently in terms of rolling dice and uh, placing them so that uh, they have some effect, but what are we gonna do now, Julie? We're gonna uh, grab our best friend, Grab our drinks. All right, take it to the table. Awesome. You know, you you almost got that right. It's supposed to be grab a drink and then grab your best okay, friend. Okay, well, it's more important to grab your best friend than your drink. Sorry. I don't know. This is a good drink. Now, we're going to take a look at the components for the Reckoners. And for those of you that would like to learn more about the world of the Reckoners, there's a link popping up above my head to our playlist on the Reckoners where I do book reviews for all of the books in the Reckoner series by Brandon Sanderson. Now, with that out of the way, we've got a ton of game here, so let's start taking a look at it. I wanna start with the holding trays, the two injection molded holding trays that Navu Games uh, provides you with. Now this one right here is for storage. It is what is going to stay in the box and help keep everything organized. The other tray right here, and this is just part of it, you're actually gonna be storing all the different minis above it in another piece, but just didn't really fit. You're gonna, this one you will use during the game to have near the board. It is going to keep your planning tokens, the barricades, and the enforcement miniatures. You can see two of the enforcement miniatures right there. And I'll try to get one of the barricades just so that you can see them. Oh, let's, uh, there we go. So these will be placed in certain of, in certain situations they appear in the city trays depending on what Steelheart does. So those are the two holding trays and some of the tokens and components that you're gonna get with the game. Before we go too deep into it, I also wanna take a look at the two books that you get in the box. Uh, please remember guys, this is the Kickstarter Deluxe Edition that we have here, which is why the planning tokens are metal. You get your rule book, which is a nice rule book. It is well put together with terms of giving you some background information about Steelheart and the different characters. You also do have a nice rule summary and quick reference guide on the back. Now, the second book that you do get in the Kickstarter Deluxe version is Untold Epics. Now, this is a book written by Brandon Sanderson, and it's supposed to be David's notebook, or notebooks. For people that are a fan of the books, uh, you'll know uh, what the, the reference is. And this is just some really interesting information about different epics. So, in the deluxe edition, you don't just have the rule book, you also have the untold epics book. I do believe there's a way to get a PDF copy. I know it was included in certain tiers of the Kickstarter. I'm not sure how it is uh, available via retail currently. 
Now that we've taken a look at those books, let's take a closer look at the city trays. Now there are seven total city trays and we're gonna use the one that's right here because it's just a little easier for me. I wanted to highlight that you can pop this portion out. You're not going to need to for the game, but it's just to show you that if they do make expansions, it's very easy for them to just create pieces that will then fit into this tray. As you can see from the one that we've got set up, enforcement and minis such as Steel Arts Mini will be placed in the upper area of the board. This is a spot for the Epic. You've got your Epic Bracket token, your Epic Research token, and their Health token that all fit in the board and also fit, we'll just show you a quick example, easily in the track. Now let's take a look at the tokens quickly. So these tokens are metal. This is the deluxe edition once again. So the tokens come in metal. And this is your epic bracket token. And I'm gonna show you guys in epic now just so you can see what, how this token works. I kept a few different epics out so you can see them. So the hotness is a special epic that was included in the Kickstarter that has a special ability. I just wanted to show you guys it's a neat, cool foil card. I'll put them back now. Now here we've got Stasis and Frostbite. So you would put them right there. But for example, you can see with the bracket, it's going to show you what ability they have. And as that's just a little too far away, which is why I kept one right here, you can see that as epics get stronger, triggers more abilities, more nastiness for our for us, the players, I was going to say our players, but more for us, the players. I'll leave Stasis out just so you have a good idea of what the CD board will look like. We'll show you guys how you actually set it up with the research and the health when we go into the setup of the game. So we've taken a look at the city boards. Let's take a look at our two resource boards before we really dive into the players. Well, two resources. Steelheart's not really a resource, but... I think it sort of falls into the same category. So here we've got the Reckoners, Reckoners resource board, as well as the Steelheart tracking board. Now here you will track your money. Once again, metal tokens. So if you happen to get rich, something that would happen with a higher player count, you can keep track of it all there. You've got two tokens for population. If I can get this in from as far away as I am, got it done. So you track your population, which you don't want to get to zero. You've got space up there for the equipment track. And I'm just going to put some cards in there just to show you. And as it's just easier for me to reach, we've got some cards right here. You're going to be playing the equipment out like this. And then you're able to purchase them. As you can see, you can get some really cool equipment. We're not going to go through all of the different symbols here but just to give you an idea you can get a jacket which gives you an extra black dye the tensors which give you an extra green dye we'll talk about why that's important and then you also have gravitonics here which can change the value on a die and then what's pretty cool the imager and I'll put that one back is that you can spend one research as if it was three planning so pretty cool I really like the Reckoners, the Reckoners resource track. And let's look at Steel Hearts now, because this is the other sort of resource that you're managing. So you've got the die, which is Steel Hearts movement die. And much like, and I'll just take these off, I just want to show you there is the two tokens that you're going to be needing. Well, more than two, but you still need these. You've got the two tracks for Steel Art, the research that you need to find his weakness, then his health track right here. So there are two tracks. Also, you then have these other two tracks right here, which is Steelheart's damage and the abilities that go off during his turn, population, trying to track down your base, the deployment of enforcement and barricades. You'll notice that there is another track on the other side. Now, it's because this track you can use section A or section B, then the track that's right here Depends on the amount of players, section A and B. You can see the six player track on the corner, so you can make it harder or easier depending on who you're playing with. We also have 
steel heart right here. But as you can see, he does come off, meaning if there were some other villains, potentially regalia, obliteration, fans of the book will know who they are. You may see them and they would just go on this track. One of the things that I do really like about the game is how easy it will be for Naval Games to create some expansions without having to, you know, recreate all of these trays. Now that we've taken a look at Steelheart's track, we're going to take a look at his minis, and right after that, we'll take a look at the player track boards and the player miniatures. So here are the two Steelheart minis that come in the deluxe game. You can see, I'm just holding this head here, we've got a painted miniature. I actually really enjoy it. I think they did a fairly good job for a mass, uh, you know, mass paint job. And then the special Kickstarter edition, the steel miniature, which I do appreciate. Uh, if you have read the book, you'll get why they created the, uh, the steel one. And now we've got our six player characters. Now, if you do play a one player game, you will play with two characters. But as you can see, each character has their own miniature. Now there are the colored stands to help you out if needed. So for example, if you're a prof, you'd be using the uh, black stand, I believe it's there. David the blue, Megan the red. As they're painted, we don't really use them. And you notice that each character has their own special ability that's unique to them. So in terms of prof, they call it lead the way, improvise, checkmate, faith, operations, and sniper. I don't want to go through all of these and how the players differ. I just want to give you guys a nice feel for the game and the components. And we'll talk a little bit more about that stuff when we go into the how to play. But let's take a closer look at the miniatures. We've got Jonathan Fedris holding a sword, which is a little bit of a spoiler if you've yet to read uh, the book. We've got Abraham holding his trademark, you know, Gravitonics gun, which I really uh, enjoy. He, I didn't quite picture it like that, but it's still, uh, still pretty cool. I'll just put them uh, back. We've got David with his uh, rifle, very attached to it if you uh, know the books. And then Megan with her infamous jacket and she loves her pistols. And then we've got Cody who is the sniper of the group with uh, the nice long barrel rifle. And then finally Tia who runs operations and make sure that the Reckoners stay out of trouble. Now, I do like all of the minis, and you can see that there are some real differences for the abilities. Now, with these tracks, essentially what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be rolling dice, and then once you've selected what you're gonna be keeping, you place it here, so this is roll number one. Your second roll, you always have to keep one die. Same thing for roll number three. Now let's talk about the dice that we have right here because it goes directly with the players. So as you can see, there are the basic die, which have the one symbol on each side. Then you've got the character dies, which are, are four of each. So for example, you will get two of a specific symbol on certain dice. So in the case of the blue, and we'll just flip it over, it's the containment. You've got, with red, it is the battle enforcement one. Green is deal damage to epics. Yellow is money. As you can see the money symbol right there. Whereas purple is operations and research right there. And finally, the boss man, the leader of the Reckoners himself, Jonathan's black dice gives you double planning. So those are the dice, and as you can see, the colors correspond to the different heroes. Now, we've just about covered everything that comes in the box. The last thing I want to take a look at really is the nice and easy player aid, which gives you a quick reference guide, as well as a nice reference for the turn. We also didn't yet take a look at Cody's sniper token. Now Cody has this and it's because he can shoot long range. And just to get a better look one last time, the cool metal planning tokens. Ah, and I did neglect something. We've got the Reckoner Base tracker token, which does go here as, as part of the Reckoner Base resource track. Now we've taken a look at all the components. 
We're gonna jump into how you set up and how you play the game. But before we do that, I actually was just thinking about it. We will just take a quick look at some of the characters' abilities to showcase their differences because I think it actually is gonna fit better with the component review than in the setup. So for example, David is good at improvising. He can pick any, like he can pick the side of any one die. He can do this once per uh, his activation phase, the Reckoner phase. Megan is your damage dealing assassin. She can spend and contain to deal three damage directly to epics instead. Cody gets a snipe. Tia gets a planning token every turn. We get Faith, which means, uh, I'm not sure with Faith, but I do believe it lets you uh, re-roll three of your dice again. You know, trusting in Faith and getting some luck. Haven't played as Abraham yet. And lead the way, you can spend one of your deal damage directly to epics to actually take on enforcement. So as you can see, very cool. Every character is different. And these dice slots are obviously just places for you to keep the die, you know, after you spend it. All right, we've done it. We've taken a look at all the components for the Reckoners, this big, beautiful setup. And now we're going to jump into how you play the game. Now we're gonna take a look at how you set up the Reckoners. Now I've gone ahead and selected three of the city boards. You can pick any of them. The locations are really just for flavor. There is no difference between any one of the boards. What I've done is that we have our hit point tracker for the epic hit points. We've got the epic research tokens already set out on the board ready for when the epics show up and the epic bracket trackers. Now we've got our villain Steelheart set up. We do have Steelheart's mini. We also have his board set up with his damage track below and we're starting out with the research track. Now this is the part that is customizable so I'll show that to you. Now as I mentioned during the components if you saw it there is an A side sorry I had that backwards an A side and a B side to each of these two player, three player, or up to six player pieces. I'm setting it up at 2A for an easier playthrough. You also have the corresponding A and B side on this part of Steelheart's uh, setup. The one thing I just want you to note, there are some definite differences you can see with the barricades. And there's only one of these. This is the aspect that changes depending on how many players. We're then going to take the epic bracket tokens and we set them at one. So, so here we've got it at one. All right, oops, no, I did not set up the population track right. Everything starts at one. Now, there is this handy tray to keep everything. As you can see though, the game takes up a lot of room. That's why the tray is off to the side off camera. We are also doing a two player game. So you can see there is Megan and David. And Megan is set up. You can't see her, she's off camera. I've got David. I will be bringing her on camera so that you can see her. Now what we need to do is get our epics out. So our first epic we get is stasis. And all epics that start, you're going to set their epic bracket at three. So you can see this aspect here, the blue colored aspect, that is the setup. We will then draw out death point. We will also set up at three. And then finally, Night Wielder, oh, he's a nasty one. And we're going to set him up also at the third level. So we've gone ahead and we've now set up the epics on the city tracks. Don't forget to set up the epic research, their starting health. Now you may get the health level of infinity. What that means is you must research. And I'll take out stasis for just a second, bring her up higher to the camera. So you can see her house is infinity. You must do four research, then her house will be available. You'll see it, it will be at three. Now here you'll notice that there is the king 
Well, it's very hard to see, but it matches the token, he, sorry, the symbol here on Steelheart track, meaning if you defeat her, you gain three research on Steelheart. And then we've got the dollar value of what you will earn as well. Now, we've taken a quick look at that. City boards are set up, the epics are set up. We need to then set up the Reckoner board. The Reckoner board, you start with four cash to place the other one at zero. And you start off with a total of 40 population. Next, what you can do is you're going to take out the equipment cards and deal out the top four. Uh, that one's a little backwards. Ooh, one of my favorites. And we also have the drone, another great card. Now you are able to just sort of chuck that. If I'm not mistaken, it's $1. You spend $1, you will discard all of these cards and redraw a new set of four cards. You don't necessarily want to do that, especially not with a nice board such as what we have here. Now, David has been taken out and he's set up. He's got his three dice that go correspond to his color. We've got the three basic die. David has his skill. His miniature is there. We just need to start with one planning token. And I'm just going to bring her into view. As you can see, Megan is set up as well with her planning token. I also have nearby, just as I recommended, a nice player reference sheet to keep things easy and rolling smoothly. Now, I will need to get Steel Art set up right here at 18. So I do need to just grab two research tokens. I don't have those out right now, so I'm going to just borrow them from death point there and set them up at 18. I do need to set up night wields. Sorry, I stole them from death point and night wielder. So we do need to get those guys set up. We also have the reckoner base and it starts off at the first position here. Now, what I'm going to grab the two tokens and get those set up when we jump into the how to play. But just to take you guys through this, when Steelheart researches the Reckoner base, bad things happen. If it gets here, they, he finds your base. You then need one player will lose an action die. You need to spend $2 to regain it. And then the track shall reset. Now, everything's just about set up. Just missing these two research tokens, which I'm going to grab. Steel art starts. You just kind of roll them around. I'm not looking. I stop. He starts in one random district of the city. Now, this is called the prologue phase. What you then do is you immediately trigger the red part of his board, meaning in this scenario, he spawns two enforcement in groups of two, which is the base. And as it's set at one, it means three. So he's going to spawn three members of enforcement to spawn with him. The other one goes to the next location clockwise, which will be the New Cargo Theater. We also have Steelheart's movement die, which we're going to get out of the way and place on Steelheart's track. So the game is now set up. As you can see, it's not that difficult to get all set. We've got David. We've got Megan. They are set and ready to go. We just need to decide where they're going to be in the city. Now, we want to look at potentially who are the most dangerous, what are the biggest rewards that we're going to get. Night Wielder is definitely very dangerous because he can boost other epics. And I think that's where David is going to go. And you know what? I don't normally do this, but I'm actually going to have Megan go to the Navy Pier as well. Meaning we're not going to have anyone in the New Cargo Theater or at the Magnificent Mile to start the game. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to just take the New Cargo Theater. I'm going to move it off camera. We're going to slide Megan on camera. And as we play, if anything does happen with regards to the New Cargo Theater, and definitely when we go into the epic phase, I will bring this board back into play. So we've got everything covered. Keep it right here. The game is now set up, and we're going to be back with how you play the Reckoners as we go into the Reckoner phase. 
Now, I've got my two missing mark, not market research, I'm thinking about work here, but our epic research tokens, and we're gonna get those set up on the board. I've also grabbed two extra health cubes because you'll need them, you know, once you get Steelheart down after you've gotten all of your research completed on him. So what we're going to do then is we're going to do our rolls. I'm gonna roll right here and I'll put the, the dice on camera. Now you do roll simultaneously, but you don't need to you know, complete everything at once. This is a cooperative game. Depending on what David rolls, Megan can sort of wait and take her time. And we've got a really interesting, difficult situation. So we'll see what we can do. And the last thing that we needed to do was we are able to actually purchase. So at the start of the game, during the prologue phase, I actually neglected to do it. We were allowed to purchase an item. We've got the drones, the drone, which is fantastic. And I'll bring this up here. We've actually have a lot of really good stuff. You can see this symbol means in any district in the city, you may do this effect. And we'll go through those effects once we roll the die. But as this one's right here, this is kill enforcement or engage enforcement. And you know what, let's take a look right now because we actually have all of them out on the cards. That's just a real stroke of luck. Here would mean grenade launcher. You can do two damage to an epic. So that's the damage to an epic symbol anywhere in the city. With regards to the notebook right here, this is two research to an epic anywhere in the city. And then lastly here we have the EMP, which is the containment symbol, which means you can, you know, weaken Steel Hearts powers or another Epic's powers as you work to contain them. Now to do this, in this case, you'd have to spend one enforcement symbol to trigger that effect. Now we're able to buy just one of these. And Night Wielder is, well we, yeah, there's everything's expensive. It's all really good stuff. We're gonna buy the notebook. And for the moment, I'm gonna place it right here with David. And the moment you buy something, you draw another card. And we'll set our cash to zero. So we've now completed the last little bit of the prologue phase and we're now ready to play the game. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna just place the notebook because I wanna be rolling the dice. We'll place it right here next to improvise. And first thing we're gonna do, we'll roll David's dice. We need to get some research going. We gotta stop Night Wielder. So don't have too much space here. I'll slide everything on and let's see what we get. While we do have one epic damage and one research, we have two research actually. We need three research to hurt Night Wielder. Uh, that's gonna be the plan. We will keep these die. And then these I'm gonna just place at the top right here. Get ready to roll again. We will roll for Megan. We'll push everything back for you. Now, interesting enough, and I didn't actually, uh, we do need a five damage for Night Wielder, so that's good. We've got the contain, which Megan can use to trigger her checkmate ability. So if you look at checkmate, it means she can do three damage to an epic. So we definitely wanna keep it. Oh, put it in the wrong spot. We're gonna need another damage. We now have a total amount of damage available to defeat Night Wielder, which is gonna be very good. We do need one more research. And you know what? I've actually made a mistake here now I'm looking at it. We've been rolling a lot of research and I am storing a lot of research. I should not have picked up the notebook just the way I'm playing the game. Uh, the playthroughs Julie and I did, we did not have that really should have picked up the drones. So I will place the notebook back, I'm gonna place the grenade and I'm gonna take the drones instead. It's a co-op game, I know I really shouldn't be doing it but we're teaching you guys how to play, so don't feel so bad. Now we're gonna place Megan's dice back there and we'll roll David's. Hmm, we could definitely use some cash. I like the idea of cash, these aren't, the best right now, we really would like to get some more containment, but we can use improvise, so we'll see what else comes up. We're gonna roll for Megan. We get, ooh, two defeat enforcement. We definitely would like 
to be able to do that. We'll store these two. We could even store the money. I don't really see anything else that I'd want to do necessarily other than money. So we'll keep that meaning. We don't have to roll a third time, but David will roll a third time. We get damage to an epic and I put him in the wrong spot and research. We're stuck keeping our last roll, but don't forget we've got improvise so that we do have some options that we can do. Now the first thing I want to do is, actually you know what, that'll be done later. Let's start with Megan actually. Two simplest thing to do is defeat enforcement. We're gonna spend those and boom, they're defeated. We don't need to worry about them. Now, what we're gonna need to do is we need to research Night Wielder. I'm gonna spend all of my research, which we've moved down to three. Night wheel has been researched, you know, know his weakness, which then means we can place the cube at five. We're now able to do damage to him. David is going to deal two damage to Night Wheeler, getting him down to three. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna deal this damage. I'm gonna keep this one for improvise because Megan is going to deal four. So I only dealt one, cube should have been a four. He dies. And we're then going to remove Night Wielder. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to place him here for the moment because we are going to gain some rewards, as you can see up there, because we have actually defeated him. Now we're going to get some money. Two bucks right there. Megan has a research. And we are in the same zone as Steelheart, meaning we are going to apply that research to Steelheart, lowering him down to 17. And now David really wants, is going, is going to use Improvise. We need to contain Steelheart. We're gonna flip that to our double containment. Barricades are incredibly annoying and we don't want him to be able to find our base. Now I'm gonna also use the drone to take out more enforcement officers. And in that case, I'm going to bring back Stasis right here because we're going to defeat the enforcement officer that is on her board. Now we'll put that back off camera. We are also able to, if we would like, to spend these planning tokens. Just drawing a blank there for a second. But I don't think we're in a great situation to do it. We could do some more research on steel art because planning tokens can be used as any one-sided die symbol. And besides maybe getting some money actually, you know what, let's be aggressive here. Spend both of these. Get some money, we're not getting any more money. Night Wheeler is gonna be giving us some planning tokens. And this opens up the grenade launcher and definitely deal some damage to some guys. I like that actually, so that will be exactly what we do. Now, let's take a look at the reference card just to make sure what we've done. So we have done roll dice, we've done the use dice, we are now at receive rewards, so each epic defeat in this phase will grant you a reward. We then get four, and let's bring this up closer so you can see it. We have four research on Steelheart and three planning tokens. So Night Wheeler has now been defeated. We gain three planning tokens. Just note you cannot use them the turn that you receive them, and it does suggest to place them next to the player boards. But in this case, with limited space, I'm just gonna place them on the player boards. And I will give David two of them, because Megan is very powerful, and I think she's the one that's gonna get the uh, grenade launcher. And we get our four research on Steel Art, which drops this down to a 13. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move Megan out of here. And we'll bring back Stasis. Because we now need to activate our epics, which is never very fun. And before we do that, we do need to draw a new epic. And we get the epic known as Snowfall. And wow, she is a pain. When you draw a new epic, you do set their bracket to only the one. And let's see what's going to uh, occur. So we're gonna go around clockwise, starting with the space that Steelheart is in. 
Now this is fortify. And as you'll notice, that fortify is for two different epics. And you can see right here, the epic actions of fortify. It's gonna be very annoying. Let's first get her set up here and we're going to set her health at infinity. She's, she's gotta go. She definitely has to go. Now, she fortifies, meaning she gets to boost her health, sorry, her market research by two and her health potentially by two. Now, because she has infinite health, she does not actually boost her health. It's stuck at infinity. Next, what we do is we then slide the bracket up by one. Now, we need to go through stasis here. Now, stasis affects the reckoner base by one. Next thing that we have is the blue track goes up by one, giving Steelheart a barricade. Afterwards, she kills two population, bringing us down to 38. And then her track will go up by one. We now get to death point who just really likes to kill people. So the yellow track for steel art goes up by two and we lose one population before that slides up, bringing us to 37. Now we need to go and activate steel heart. Now the population damage is four. So we're going to lower the population by another four. He will not be looking for our base, thankfully. He does spawn three enforcement officers, so two here and one where stasis is. And he also spawns a barricade that we potentially, well, we have to get rid of in order to move. Now, one thing I do want to explain is that enforcement, what they do is they pump up epics. So in this case, for example, let's say Death Point had only been, well, he was here, but let's say those two enforcement officers have been alive, they've been in his area, what would happen is he would have actually moved it up an extra two spaces, meaning we, he, would have, he would have triggered this ability here, which means he would have killed an extra population. But luckily, that's not what happened. We're here and we don't have any enforcement officers. Next, we need to move Steelheart. So we roll the die. We'll do it right there. We get a three, meaning Steelheart goes one, two, three, ends up exactly where he was. And that's how you play the Reckoners. So we've explained how to play. I'm having a good time here. I'm gonna do one more turn of this just to give you guys another example, a little bit more flavor to this. And then we're gonna jump into our review of the game. And we're back with our second and final turn that we're gonna do in our how to play of the Reckoners. Now, just so that we get our heroes back together, I'm going to remove Stasis, put her off camera, and we're bringing back our girl, Megan. Now, the one thing I did actually neglect to do is the buy equipment phase. It's not a big deal, we haven't made any changes. We got some people we wanna kill though. So we are going to buy the grenade launcher, which will enter into Megan's possession. Now, we're going to retake our dice. And we gotta start rolling. So we'll start with, and let's untap our abilities. We definitely have some epics that need to be defeated. And before I forget, let's redraw a card. Ah, the safe house is a really cool card as it would let you uh, contain from anywhere. Dollars, defeat enforcement and a planning token. Not much that I like, but we need to get rid of a barricade potentially. So I'll keep a dollar because any die can be spent to get rid of a barricade. And we're going to, Megan's actually gonna hold off. Let's see what David gets before she rolls. I wanna see if we get some better stuff. Ah, double contain is good. But I really would like to be able to do some damage but we need some research because Snowfall with their Fortify is just 
a little too much. She's not that strong, but we need to do more and two money. Now, the way I did this was totally fine. I could have done things a little differently, but I wanted to go all through David. Now we'll go through Megan. And whew, Megan is deadly. But unfortunately, we need some research first. Now, we've got the research. Don't forget, she can deal with checkmate, direct damage to an epic. So keeping all of this stuff is not necessarily the best unless we wanted to move because we could potentially just uh, take out death point or yeah, or maybe stasis, but nope, stasis has infinite health. We need research. So the only one she could attack would be death point. She's got almost enough. So we're going to keep the research because that's what we need. We need one more of those. We do have our planning tokens that we can do. But we'll keep one. I don't want to keep one of the red die. Actually, I'm going to keep one of these damages because we might want to get this lovely two enforcement to take care of those guys. Now, Megan will roll. Hopefully, we get something good. And, yeah, that's good. We'll take the research. And we'll keep one of these. Oh, you know what? I don't want the red die. I want the green die, the basic die. We'll keep one just in case we don't get anything. We can't trigger checkmate. And you know what? Look at that. We can't necessarily trigger checkmate. Now, what we could do to trigger checkmate would be spend this, because this counts as a die action. So we could spend this as a containment to trigger checkmate. But we don't necessarily need to do that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is David will use his drones and bye-bye enforcement. Let's get rid of those guys. We now need to research Snowfall. So we'll get our research die out there. Snowfall good loses four. One, two, three, four. She now only can take three damage. And we've got a lot more damage in three that we can do potentially on here. So you know what, actually? We are going to take our planning token and we're going to use it as a die, as a containment to trigger checkmate and we will defeat Snowfall, who I will place on the Reckoner board for the moment. Now Megan's going to need to potentially move. We've got to get rid of the, the barricade. We've got some dollars here. David will spend one of his dollar die to get rid of the barricade. And instead of getting a planning token back, Megan is going to move to where death point is and then deal three damage to death point. And she can do another two by using her grenade launcher. Now we're in an interesting situation because we can potentially take out another epic. So what what David's actually going to do? We're going to use the planning uh, use a planning token. We're going to use another dollar die to move. We're going to get out of there. We're going to back up Megan and attack Death Point because he's just murdering people, and we do not like that. But before David is going to move, we want to spend the two containment to use on Steelheart. So we'll get this barricade back down. And enforcement hasn't really been a problem. Population is troublesome, but we're in a fairly good spot. Let's lower the uh, enforcement track. And, yep, so we do that before we move. And then move. I can use Improvise to take my last die, turn it into a skull, and then defeat Death Point. We now have these two epics that have been defeated. So we'll take them both up here. Well, let's see what rewards we actually get. Now we get five more research on Steelheart. So three, bring it down to zero, bring it down to zero. We then get another two, bring in the research that we need down to eight. We gain Two bucks right here, plus 
and you have two containment, which we can either use on steel heart or we can use it on stasis. Now let's take a look at stasis again. Her card slid, so she was here. We can definitely lower stasis by two. Steel heart seems fairly contained. We will actually lower her track by two. Now we've now resolved these cards and we will take them off the board. They are now out of play. We then need to reset up with some new epics and drop these tracks back down to one. Ones I don't particularly like, but aren't overly challenging for the moment. Now, Megan is going to once again jump off camera as we bring back stasis. All right, so what we're going to do is go through the epic phase. Now the black goes up by one. Warm bubble will slide up. Stasis will make another attempt to find her base. The blue goes up by one. She's really annoying. She's got to go. But this time there's enforcement here, meaning her track goes up by one plus the extra from enforcement. And you'll notice this part of the card. I will grab another character in a second just to teach you that. We do get an enforcement that spawns from the armsman. And then he does get the boost, which goes up by two because there's now an enforcement character there. And we did not lose any population because we didn't have anything bad happen. Now, well, it's coming though. CLR takes out four population, dropping us down to 30. He actually makes one more research towards our base. He spawns two more enforcement officers and a barricade. And now he's going to fly around the board with a one, meaning he's going to move over to where Stasis is in the new Cargo Theater. Now, we've gone ahead and we've shown you guys how to play the game. We've gone through two full turns of the game. So you're getting an idea of it right now. If you do have any questions on any specifics, you've got the nice rules summary here. You've got the explanation of the symbols. You also have examples how to play in the rule book, full explanations of the actual cards, some of the more complicated ones, and the epic actions. Now, gone through the game. Hope you guys enjoyed our how to play and learn how to play it. And we are now moving on to our review of the game. And we're back quickly guys, before we get to the review of the game, because I realized I neglected to show you something. So what I'm going to do is you're going to pick up Stasis's board and I want to show you what happens if she's maxed out. So, in the case that she is maxed out and you've got, so her track is full, it's the end of the turn, she's still active, you would then move the epic bracket up one, but you can't. You also trigger this section of the card. So for stasis, for example, you would then move this track up by one on steel heart. You can see over here from the armsman, you would then move the yellow track up by one and in the case that you can't, you then kill one population. So whenever you've got to boost Steel Arts tracks up and you can't, one population dies. So Wormhole, as you can see, would be the red. Let's grab our three defeated epics. We can see what they would be. Death Point would kill another population. Snowfall, she's just an evil murderess as well. And Nightwheel does, Nightwielder does the same thing. So. We're done guys, sorry about that. Let's get on to the review. So The Reckoners, based on the novels by Brandon Sanderson, ones you haven't read, but I've read. What did you think of the game? Well, it's definitely got colorful dice. They're like candy, like jujubes. Delicious dice. Yeah, to use Sammy G's words. 
Uh, I I enjoyed uh, the production value of this. I think you have the deluxe edition. Yeah. So just to go over the differences between the deluxe and the retail, from what I'm aware, it is primarily the painted miniatures, the steel miniature of uh, Steelheart. We also have a few promo cards that aren't included in the base game. And there is also uh, an extra epic, the hotness, as well as the uh, the nice book that I uh, showcased in the components, the untold epic book, which is essentially David's journal. Yep. I enjoyed having the painted minis. I mean, we've never played with painted minis. Neither of us has the patience to paint them. No, I, I'd like to. There are definitely some that I think I'd love to make a lot more. Pretty. I mean, you do love Tara, but I think if I painted her and she was ugly, you'd never play her again. Very possibly. Yeah. And I neglected to mention there was also the steel tokens instead of the plastic ones. Uh, so yeah, the production value is great. I, I I thought it was it was fun to play with. It's nice to be able to place your di your dice in the in the plastic trays. Um, so I was also very happy to see playing this game that I picked it up faster than other games that we've played recently. Like Street Masters. Yeah, which weren't so kind to me. Um, hey, you I, did pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, this this was fun. I know we were playing on beginner uh, to get it to figure it out, and and the different ver the different playthroughs we all did on beginner so that we could try. We tried different characters to see if that made a difference. I have to say, for me personally, it made a big difference. Uh, when I started this journey uh, with you playing cooperative games, I said, no, no, I'm going to be a sniper. I don't want to be melee. I don't want to be playing. She, she was always the ranged character, and now she's the Wookiee. Yeah. Like, that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> I, I like to be in there, and I like to have some fight. I, I don't like to be standing far away and just pew, pew, and there's one person dead, and that's it. Um, so I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing with Megan. Megan was a lot of fun. Uh, Cody was okay, not so bad. I mean, we were effective anyways, but I think uh, we were much more efficient uh, and effective with uh, with David and Megan. Yes, because uh, our first playthrough, just you know, we made a lot of bad choices. We bungled it, and we literally won one with one population left. The second playthrough, I think we had about twenty five or thirty population left. No, we didn't have thirty. We we had, I think we had about seventeen. Uh, we we were had under twenty. But in any case, I'm pretty it, sure it was over 20. But in any case, it it felt easy. It felt pretty easy, which is and why it was we, didn't take very long. Sort of jump in. Right no, there. it took about half an hour. Uh, so I'd be interested in playing it with more players uh, to see what that dynamic is, um, and uh, also probably trying it on a little bit harder. I think we definitely could use it at a harder difficulty because even that second playthrough where we had 17. Population left. I've gone through the rule book. I looked at if we'd gone up to standard, if we'd gone up to hard, we might have been a little bit more pressed if we were hard. But based on the last amount of damage that we did, I think he had like four or five health left, and we were we were able to do what about fifteen. Like we we were swinging really hard towards the end there. So yeah. I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. That being said, if you are used to this kind of game where you're Assigning dice and working together cooperatively to, you know, manage a situation. Don't even bother with beginner. Like, jump ahead, go to standard, go to hard. I think you will enjoy the game a lot more. Agreed. Uh, there weren't really any cons uh, for me. I mean, I enjoyed there's a good quantity of villains that we went through. Um, we have the possibility to power up and to, to, to get our characters to be a little bit stronger. So that was fun. Um, I can say that I think maybe it seems to me that though the characters have different assets and attributes, it seems to me that David and Megan are a little bit stronger than, than the others. At least that's my impression. Uh, but it's not really a big negative. No, the, the one thing I would say is the biggest con to me was the fact that the city trades... Well, you do get some different locations and some different flavor. They're all the same. It really doesn't matter. You could pick the same three every single time. It's never going to change like your gameplay experience. There's never anything that's going to boost your characters, make it more challenging. And it's something that I would really like to see maybe in an expansion. To have those city locations be able to do something. Maybe you can you know, negatively affect an epic by triggering this location or get some population back. I'd love to see something like that or even, you know, put up a shield that would uh, block damage towards uh, the population. 
Yep. So that's really the only negative that I would say. And also, the, like like we said, the game did feel a little easy, but we did play on beginner, so take that with a grain of salt. We really wanted to get the mechanics down and try out different characters and not be too much just about like, oh, are we are we doing this right? But I do think that the game could be harder, and I think that's one of the the only cons that I would say. But the one thing I will I do see is that. The potential for the game to go bad and be more challenging, I do see it a lot more in this game than, say, for example, Batman. Like, I can honestly never imagine us losing Batman the Animated Series, where with a higher player count of, like, four or five or six, I can easily see a situation where we don't kill the right epic and things start spiraling out of control and it becomes more challenging. Great. And one thing I do want to highlight, the art in this is awesome it's fantastic i'm feeling quite remiss right now that i did not pick up and learn the name of the artist but seriously hands off i've read the books and seeing the art the different characters it really brought some of those some of those characters to life even more so than just my imagination so novel games you did a fantastic job i'm very much looking forward to seeing the uh, the expansions i know you're working on hopefully we'll see them on kickstarter or even better yet, retail uh, soon. So they are doing expansion for the other two books. So the other two cities of Babylon, Babylon Restored, and the city of Salt, Ildithia. Okay. Yeah. I guess we'll see that. We'll definitely see that. Now, just to talk about the production value, because we didn't really talk about the components, and it's something that we do sometimes on the channel. We like to give, you know, when it's when thumbs up are deserved or Thumbs down are very much deserved. We do want to say that. And I would say that we both agree. The components in this game are fantastic. I think the trays are something so unique. And I really think that that's fantastic for expansions because there's not much that they need to actually print up. There's a lot of good opportunity for them to be able to put out some very reasonably priced expansions because they don't need to give you new trays. You've got the trays. All you need is a new piece of cardboard to slot right in and I think that is very interesting and I'm eager to see what we're going to get in terms of new characters, new Reckoners. Definitely want to see Mizzy. Okay, I'll take your word for it. She's fun. Another, uh, she's a little like David but also a little like Megan at the same time. Okay. So it should be, uh, should be interesting. But the one negative I'd have to say in terms of components is the dice. Yeah, the dice seem to already be getting, uh, even after a few playthroughs, seem to be getting a little scratched up. Well, actually, I think they were they just came like that. The whole process of making the dice, packaging them, I do feel they got a little bit more scratched than I usually see on dice. But these, they are nice. They're, I like the colors. The production value is good. So it's not like this gigantic negative complaint. It's just something that we noticed that there's already some scuff marks on the dice and we've only really played it like three times on felt this... Uh, as you can see. And one neat thing that I do really appreciate from the deluxe version of the game, they did include sleeves, so all the stuff is nice and protected over the long term. Now, Julie, what would you rate the game? I think we've talked enough about it. We don't really have too many negatives, at least nothing that we really can put into words to say, hey, stay away from this game. No. But you'll learn more about what we really think about it with our score. Um, I'd give it a seven. I think if it was a little bit more challenging, I'd probably give it a seven and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed it. It just seems like, to be honest, I might get bored with this after, you know, another playthrough or, or, or so. Yeah, I think we'll definitely have to try it at a harder difficulty. I'm going to say the game itself is a 7, but the entire thing is an 8 for me. The box, not like just the box, but you guys saw storage, the trays, the, the components, the dice, like everything, for, even though they're a little scratched. Everything for me makes this an 8. This is a fantastic game. The box is a little bit of a pain in the butt to store, so it doesn't fit on any of the shelves behind us over here. So do have a nice place for it, though. And this game is definitely an 8. There's a lot of potential, and we are eagerly awaiting the expansions. And I think we will get a, quite a few plays out of this. The one thing that I do want to comment on that I think it's a, a big positive that uh, we neglected to mention is... The fact that there's so many different difficulty levels, you can get this out with anybody. And that's one thing that I really like. 
it's a great way to take the game that's you know looks a little bit bigger, scarier, but is you know it's a great it's got some great gameplay in there and get it out in front of someone that's less experienced and show them how to play, get them involved in board games. And there's something like I was thinking we could totally play this with your parents. <laughs> you want to play everything with my parents. Well, it's mainly because your mom loves games, so I love including it. It's very sweet. Yes. So with that being said, we're going to grab our drink. Grab our best friend. We're going to keep playing games. We're going to definitely keep playing games. You didn't try to steal Megan from me. Normally the high power player. No, no, we, we already went over this. Well, maybe not on camera, but we went over this. Do you play guys, I play girls? No, you already stole one Megan from me. <laughs> so I figured, like, I don't know, David is also the main character, kind of thematic for me, like, since I experienced the series. And we almost forgot something, guys. Don't forget, videos popping up above our heads. Like, comment, subscribe. But uh, I will get one Megan back. No. Yep. No.